Story 1. I had a student who had a rough life. Mom pretty much abandoned him, and Grandma was raising him by pawning him off to family on the weekends. I knew he was going to have a rough life if someone didn't step in and let him know he mattered. He asked me one day how I would know if someone loved me. I jokingly replied that that person would bring me coffee in the morning. A few days later, he came into the gym with a huge smile and a cup of gas station coffee. He walked right up and handed it to me along with a bag of creamers and sugars. He said he didn't know how I liked my coffee, so he grabbed one of each. He saved his allowance and asked his grandma to leave for school early so he could stop by the gas station. The next year, he brought me a coffee mug so I could remember him when I drank my morning coffee. That kid will always have my heart. Story 2 Back when I was teaching preschool, three-year-olds don't do subtle things. He always wanted to hold my hand when we went on walks, to sit next to me at circle time, and just to look at me with puppy eyes. It was adorable, but at the same time, it was a relief when he grew out of it. Years later, I was teaching an all-boy class at a vocational high school, and was lucky enough to get a bright new teacher to co-teach the class with me. She was also quite attractive, and the boys... Well, they reacted. Since it was an English language class, I got a kick out of doing my best Mary Poppins impression. Close your mouth, please. We are not codfish. Story 3. I had a crush on my teacher in high school. After I graduated, I asked him out to lunch with my best friend and I, and he agreed. We met up a few days later, and he walked in with his husband. That was a rough day for me. Story 4. When I was playing Hamlet in the school play, and the girl playing Ophelia got stage fright at the last minute, so the drama teacher had to costume up and sub in for her, on her knees in a low-cut bodice hanging onto my leg and screaming, Oh, help him, you sweet heavens! I got a boner in front of 500 people. Story 5 In the days of MSN, I got a chat invite from someone who had the same last name as me. I assumed it was a relation, but they didn't say anything, so I left for a bit to eat. I came back and saw a couple more people had been added to the chat and saw they'd been talking about me. I realized they were students because they referred to me as Miss. They were teasing one of the others for his crush on me, and he was defending my massive butt as hot. Story 6 I taught pre-K, and one student always wanted to be around me and would pretend to slip up and call me mom. He saw my phone had a screensaver of me and my boyfriend at the time, and he got all mad and said I should break up with him. Kids are adorable. I doubt he'll remember me in a few years. Story 7 I do have a story of when I was a high school student. It was senior year, and I had a crush on this young history teacher. He would come on model trips with us as a chaperone, so he knew who I was. It was my birthday, and he heard from a different teacher across the hall. He told me happy birthday and my response was, thanks, I'm 18. I blurted it out very quickly and realized literally the second it left my mouth how inappropriate it was. His response, well, are you registered to vote? Story 8. I teach at a local university, and I've had a few, including one who used to sketch me during class, one who tried to put his arm around me, etc., the most obvious and persistent was a student who used to follow me after class every day, show up at my office just to talk, and spent all of his time attempting to look down my shirt. He ended up dropping out of college halfway through the semester. Story 9. My first year teaching high school. The AV department made an end-of-the-year tape for students every year as a keepsake. That year, they allowed a senior to profess her love to me on the tape. I did not know she had done this, and they had allowed it until it played over their AV system to the entire school. Needless to say, I was annoyed, but I couldn't make too much of a stink because I didn't want a lot of attention drawn to it, and they weren't going to take it out. Story 10. I taught grade 7, and one kid in particular took a liking to me. It wasn't a crush per se, it came across more as an elementary school fascination with the teacher. He would raise his hand constantly during class to answer questions, and when students were doing work, he would raise his hand constantly to ask me random questions about my life. He had a few favorite questions like, what song is stuck in your head right now? Or, what's your fiancé's name? One time, he very excitedly told me he had seen me at Costco, and I hadn't been to Costco that week, 
so he clearly was seeing me in places I wasn't. Story 11. When I was in college, we had a pretty hot biology professor. Not only was he physically attractive, but he seemed to be a pretty cool person too. Most of the women in his classes were pretty smitten, and I won't pretend like I wasn't one of them. However, I went back to college after a few years off, so I was 26 in rooms of 18 to 21 year olds. Five years may not seem like a huge difference, but holy crap it was. His office was connected to the lab, and one day while myself and some other students were doing work in the lab, this one girl was quite loudly proclaiming the things she would do to him, including saying things like, I don't care if he's married with kids. He was sitting in his office at the time, and I said, You need to keep your ovaries in check, he can definitely hear you right now. She said she didn't care, and she hoped it tempted him. It made me uncomfortable for him. I can't imagine how he must have felt. He usually came out of his office to chat with us or help us, but not that day. Story 12 A student who had a crush on me wrote a straightforward proposition and asked another teacher to deliver it to me. This teacher was a mentor of sorts to the student, so you'd think he'd do something wiser and more responsible than what he actually did which was deliver the note and threaten me with some form of unspecified violence if I told anyone. So I informed the principal, and both the student and teacher were transferred to other schools. Story 13. Used to be a Cub Scout guide. One of our boys, 10 years old, had a crush on my adjutant, 16-year-old girl. He swore she would be his girlfriend one day, and was strangely serious about it. We laughed it off and forgot about it. Years went by, the boy became a man, joined the army, came back, went to medical university, got buff and handsome, and reached out to his old crush on Facebook. They got married last May and have a baby girl. Story 14. Back in middle school, 16 years ago, I had a crush on a teacher of mine, although I wasn't aware of the severity of it until it was too late. Around Halloween time, we were supposed to write a poem about a teacher of ours. I, of course, procrastinated until the night before and then realized that I lost the sheet with the contents of what the poem is supposed to be. All I knew was that it had to be about a teacher, so I chose my crush, unbeknownst to me. The next day, I show up to class and try to turn in my paper, where I was informed by my teacher crush that we were going to be reading our poems in front of two classes, separated by a sliding wall half the time. As other students read theirs, I quickly realized that these poems were supposed to be Halloween-related. I panicked because mine did not fit the criteria and had nothing to do with Halloween. It wasn't until I was reading mine aloud that I felt the sudden rushing aha moment of what I had just confessed to the entire two classes. Both teachers from either side of the wall and the entire student body watched in stupefied horror as I read it aloud, voice and hand shaking too late to turn back. It went like this to start. Mr. Hopper, Mr. Hopper, I have a dog named Copper. Mr. Hopper, Mr. Hopper, you make my eyes popper. I don't remember the rest. When I finally looked at Mr. Hopper, his entire face and neck was red with embarrassment. We never spoke of it ever, and I avoided him like the plague. I'm sure it was the same on his end. Story 15. When I was in school, a teacher found another student's very graphic, erotic fanfiction about him. Ended up having a conference with her parents, counselor, and principal. The girl got transferred to a different classroom but tried to shoot up the school with what she thought was her brother's secret gun. It was a toy he modified to look real. Hadn't seen or heard about her since. But before I graduated, the school made it a rule that staff were not to be depicted in any creative work and if any such work was found, the owner was looking at suspension. Story 16. When I was in high school, I saw a handwritten letter on my English teacher's desk while waiting to speak with her. Other kids were hanging around the desk, but I think I was the only one to spot and read the letter. It was sitting among piles of paperwork, partially obscured, but not hidden, so I suspect even the teacher hadn't seen it yet. Paraphrasing, but the letter went something like this. Mrs. S. I love your curves. I can't stop thinking about you. You are my favorite teacher because you have a great smile. I want to touch you and kiss you and... There was more, but I didn't pull the letter from the pile to read it because I realized how it would look for the teacher. 
and I was scared other people would see it. She was my favorite teacher at the time, and I suspected this note was very much not welcome, judging from her personality. Very chill, friendly, professional teacher, and the fact that it wasn't hidden. You'd think a teacher-student relationship would be a little less obvious. I never told my friends. I never mentioned it to the teacher. I just kept quiet. I suspected she was the victim here, not the student, and I wasn't about to start any gossip about her, potentially getting her fired. A few years later, another student was kicked out of school for sexually harassing a new art teacher. It was so bad she had anxiety attacks and sped from the room to a neighboring class to be with another teacher and escape him. He was finally kicked out when he sent her unsolicited dick pics. He got her number without her permission, and she took it to the school board and police. I suspect it was the same kid who wrote the letter, but I have no proof. Story 17 I was in a psych class in my senior year of high school and had an admittedly attractive male teacher for the class. We're in the library one day to work on a presentation project, and I go to the printer to pick something up. This girl, who was clearly a sophomore, career school, all sophomores had purple polos, asked if I was in the teacher's class, and I said yes. She then told me, You know he's really, really hot. Like, I'd really like to F him. But if you tell anyone, I'll kill you. I just got out of the printer room with my work as fast as possible and told the teacher, who was horrified. That girl had looked dead serious and terrifying when she said that, and while I was 17 at the time, I was still scared. If you're reading this, Mr. Boggs, I hope you and your wife are doing awesome. Story 18. I was accused of having a teacher crush on my math TA in college. I'm okay with math, but I have to put in a lot of practice and I go to office hours. I'm very visual and I really like to just watch math problems being done. I'm also very much a soundboard learner, and I talk myself through problems or talk with others through the problems. My TA figured this out, and he went out of his way to help me. It also just so happened that he was the TA for various math courses while I was in college, and I managed to get him as a TA for all but one of my math classes during my entire undergrad. My last class I had with him, I wrote him an absolute stellar review because he deserved it for helping me get through calculus to linear algebra. That summer, I actually worked with him in a program where he taught math and I taught programming. I sat in on his first class, and he was telling his students he got this amazing review this past year, and, yep, it was my review. I called him the Chuck Norris of TAs, and he quoted that line and others I used, so I know it was mine. I gasped and went, hey, I wrote that review and I could see he was genuinely appreciative. I spent the time writing such a review, but then the whole class went, Ooh, someone has a crush on the teacher. I was so embarrassed. Anyways, I had those freshmen for 8 a.m. introductory programming, and I made their quizzes extra hard compared to the other sections. The TA and I would drink and grade papers with the other teachers, and man, even drunk math majors still talk about math. Story 19. When I was student teaching, a student very badly photoshopped a picture of his head onto my profile picture from social media, which had me and my now husband together. He posted it to his social media, saying, me and my new girlfriend, Miss Walshugar. Another student asked me to prom and gave me a rose. Hard no. I laughed it off, but I was actually super nervous I was going to get in trouble, even though I hadn't done anything wrong. Last year, a student called me the hot teacher in front of his friends. I don't think he had a crush on me, though. I think he was trying to get a rise out of me. It worked. I called his super strict mom immediately, before calming down, so I was still very angry. And she said, and I quote, whooped his butt. Story 20. Oh, man. I teach in a small program at a local university, so I've become friends with many of my students over the years or at least gotten to know them pretty well. I've had students of all genders openly admit to having a crush on me, tell me other students have a crush on me, flirt openly, text flirt, even had a couple students fighting with each other on who could flirt more or win more of my attention. Some of it was kind of funny and lighthearted. Some of it was not. Story 21. A girl asked me to read what was clearly fanfic about me and the other students in the class. She is openly bi and mostly crushes on blonde women. 
I'm a blonde woman, and the story was about a beautiful blonde queen dealing with very specifically described evil beings. A few boys in the class she didn't like. She watched my reaction very closely as I read, and I just played dumb about the obvious parallels and complimented her writing and creativity. I'm 31, but look young for my age and take very good care of my looks and body. However, as a high school teacher, I'm careful not to dress a certain way. There are so many hormones flying around, and high school is bad enough without having a crush on your teacher. I never really had a crush on a teacher, but I imagine it's uncomfortable and confusing to go through. My nature is very warm and nurturing though, very matronly, so I haven't had any experiences where it's been a lingering problem. Story 22. First year of teaching, I had a female student say, I know you're married, so I could be your pet. You could even keep me on a leash. Immediately, I excused myself and went to the principal, and the next year switched from high school to middle school. Ladies and gentlemen, always remember to keep the door open when talking to students, and join your union. Story 23. I was taking business class because I needed an extra class for whatever reason. My teacher was a coach, and she wasn't super hot, but she was attractive. I remember play flirting with her in front of the entire class and saying, I would love to take you out for Valentine's Day. She laughed it off, and someone gave her roses, and then I said, wow, these are big. And I waited for the class to get quiet, and then said, you know what else is big? And smiled at her. She didn't give a crap, so she didn't send me to the office or write me up. No. She said, I doubt your undeveloped can do any damage, in front of the whole class. I slowly put my hoodie on and slumped down in my chair. After class, after everyone had left, I shook her hand and I said, Hey, nice comeback. And she smiled. Everyone made fun of my small D after that, and I never flirted with her again. I do remember, the year after that on Valentine's Day, again, she was like, Hey, you didn't give me flowers. And I yelled across the hall, My D is too small for you, Miss Atkinson and her face got serious and turned around and went to her class. I guess she was angry that I yelled that in the hallway during our break. I was very dumb. Story 24. I started to wear even uglier clothes, grew out my beard but kept it maintained, and kept pens in my top pocket after my first two practicum placements. On my first one, I had come in nice job interview type of attire, wore nice body spray, how you smell is important, students will hate you if you stink, was clean shaven, etc. What I didn't realize, and was about to learn the hard way, is that you actually have to actively try to make yourself unattractive to your high school students due to the sheer hormonal clusterfucks their little brains are at this point in their lives. I had everything from the cheesy twirling of the hair around their pens, leaning up over my desk to ask a question, cross and recrossing their legs but way too obviously drawn out, soft cooing or moaning when pretending to yawn or stretch. Literally, you name it, these a-holes tried it. This is when I was 19, so the very small age difference likely played a large role in things, but it was very frustrating to deal with given the possible consequences if you mess up how you deal with it even slightly. My second prac, I decided, F this, I'm a married man now, surely they can't F with that. Wrong. I'd literally just gone out and spent a hundred bucks on a wedding band just for this, so that my students would think I'm some kind of red flaggy, clingy mess given that I was married at 20. Ha 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 ha, no, it made it worse. I kid you not, we had a battle of the bands type of ordeal at that particular school one week, and one of the cliques that had a few classes with me got up in front of the entire school and sang, Don't ya, pointing at me at every opportunity. They were literally trying to upstage my fake wife. So now I dress up like a cartoon character so that these children find me dorky and goofy. Though God knows there will be one of the little effers who has a Napoleon Dynamite fetish. High school is a madhouse. I'm nearly finished with my degree and will start teaching full-time at a local school next year. Wish me luck. Story 1. I went home for a weekend about three weeks ago. I've been away for 20 years, with visits maybe once every two years. I'm married, have two kids, and have a good life. From what I know about her, she's married and has one kid and is a teacher. I was shopping at the local grocery store and I saw her. 
I was flabbergasted. She looked the same as in high school. I, however, have gained 70 pounds, went bald, and have a thick, luscious beard. I got nervous. We were amazing friends from the time we were five until I left for school at 19. We did a lot of stuff together. I missed an opportunity to say hi in an aisle. I was too nervous. We ended up checking out at separate lanes at the same time. I'm sure I was staring at her. She walked by on her way out, and I chickened out again. She loaded her bags in her SUV, and I loaded mine. I started my truck and drove over to her and rolled down the window and said, Holly? She said, nope, I'm Robin. Whoops. Story 2. He is a high school financial literacy teacher at my daughter's high school. True story, when I was a freshman, he was a senior. He spread word around that he liked me and wanted to hang out. We got to know each other. He asked me to go to homecoming. I was so excited. We go to homecoming with another couple, and this d**kwad ditches me at the dance for the girl from the other couple who went with us. It was a setup. The guy was too scared to ask me out, so he had d**kwad do it, and they set this whole thing up. In 2013 or so, d**kwad found me on Facebook, sent a friend request. I accept, thinking, man, this mother piece of shit. But I wonder what he's up to. A few weeks later, and another dude we went to school with asked me out for coffee to catch up. Cue the MLM pitch. They didn't want to catch up. They wanted to pitch me their Orwin Woodward cult couple's financial freedom pyramid scheme. I was so f***ing mad. He got me again. Imagine my surprise when I learned that this piece of human excrement is a f***ing financial literacy teacher and his class is required to graduate. I've seen the guy in passing at parent-teacher conferences, and holy shit, he is visually, massively uncomfortable. I know he knows who I am, and he knows what a piece of shit I think he is, and that he's a pyramid scheme shill. I cannot wait until parent-teacher conferences in the fall. Like, I am counting down. I want him to have to sit across from me in a professional setting and explain his curriculum to me, and I have questions for him about his teachings. TLDR. Turns out he was a huge piece of shit, and then he grew up to be a bigger piece of shit. If you're seeing this, f*** you, Nick. Story 3. She died far too young. I taught hockey in Canada during summers off from high school. I'm American, and met her one summer day on a nearby beach. We fell in love immediately and wrote letters, actual letters, back and forth during the school year, and I would go back to teach again each summer until we graduated high school. Then we would visit each other for months at a time, as long as immigration would allow, for a few years, until one day, I asked her to marry me. I never had a doubt that she was the one. I was just worried because I didn't feel like I could offer her much of a life until I realized I was the life she wanted. We shared the happiest years of our lives together until she told me she had been feeling sick and very tired no matter what she did. She died of cancer shortly after. She went so fast. It was like when you light the fuse on a firework, the brief spark she had was just snuffed out. I watched her life just disappear. I held her hand as she vanished into thin air. I still remember the smell of the on her when I kissed her goodbye. I just wanted to pause the world so she could live her life. Then, when we were all ready and it was time, she could go peacefully. It just doesn't work that way. I miss her every single day. I lost my heart that day. I wish it was me that died, but at the same time, I would hate myself for leaving her to feel like I do. I was so broken, and I still am. I decided that day I could never love like that again. Wherever you are, Natalie, I love you. I haven't spoken of her to anyone in eight years. Story 4. Prison for life. In March 2018, they finally vacated his death penalty and changed the judgment to life in prison. He had been eligible for resentencing since 2011 due to ineffective counsel at his trial. Joey was a kind and decent kid when I knew him. He helped his father run the family business and cared for his father when he became ill and continued to keep the family business running. He was my first crush and my first real boyfriend. He treated me very well. So many firsts with Joey. First flowers from a boy. He gave me my first teddy bear, first French kiss, etc. Basically, learned a lot about together. Opened the car door for me, etc. Unfortunately, due to my home life, and a crazy mother, we were essentially forced apart and then grew apart. 
started hanging out with different friend groups and basically drifted away from each other. School, work, life, it happened, and we got further apart. We would run into each other here and there, and there was always a lot of warmth and caring, each always excited to see the other. We both made some life-altering mistakes in the years leading up to this event, and at one point he even reached out to me to talk and offer a shoulder when he had heard about the bad road I was on. He was kind like that. I am so glad they vacated the death penalty in his case. He had such fuck ass defense attorneys, and they really were not fit to represent him in a death penalty case. I am in no way condoning what he did to David Bernstein, and I wish David's family a measure of peace. I think about Joey often, and I wish we'd both stayed the course instead of following the paths we did. Joey has found a way to better himself while on death row. He has even invented and patented some things from inside, and of course found religion. Doesn't everyone on death row get some Jesus fever? So I wish him moments of peace living with his actions, and I wish him a measure of happiness too. Story 5 Well, we grew up in a Texas town. Now she lives in New York in an expensive condo with a view. She's a project manager at some large company making 100k plus and is marrying a very attractive man. She still has her swimmer's body too. My life is good, it's just not that good. I moved to Seattle and lived in a stylish apartment with a view of the water. I write novels and do computer science stuff, making above average money for Americans. Anyway, I don't feel bad at all. At the end of the day, she didn't like or love me for whatever reason, and I can't stay with a person who doesn't like or love me. I've had many other partners since I knew her, some of which have really blown my mind. I'm quite happy where I'm at. Story 6 I had the biggest crush on my friend's brother. When I finally worked up the courage to tell him that I liked him, he apologized because he had just started dating someone else. He had a lot going for his senior year, but got into selling drugs. He got busted and spent some time in jail. Last I heard, after he got out of jail, he married the girl he was dating when I told him I liked him. And they have four kids now. Sometimes I think maybe his life would have been better with me, but maybe my life would have been worse with him. Story 7 I went to my 10-year reunion not long ago. Mr. Crush and I are Facebook friends, but were never even really friends back in the day. Since then, he was a model for Lucky Brand Jeans and has moved up to the styling side behind the camera. He is still quite pretty. My husband came to the reunion and couldn't stop laughing when Mr. Crush came up to me, asked me what I was drinking, and I stammered Merlot. Mr. Crush proceeds to good-naturedly and drunkenly tell Hubs we had lockers next to each other one year, and it would make sense my husband would be successful and handsome, considering I was beautiful and a good student back then. Meanwhile, I was slowly melting against a wall, drunk. Too many handsome men in front of me. Is it hot in here? No, just me? If I could go back in time, I'd tell a 15-year-old me that someday she'd be married to a stud, and the boy she could never, and still can barely, talk to thought she was beautiful all along. Story 8 in a relationship with a file. I warned her against it since we were kids. Her whole family is going nuts because she is 18 and he is 40 with two kids. Divorced and the parents were retired enough to not see it a mile away. Oh well, I hope they have fun. I refer to him as a because whenever we used to go camping or anywhere, he would always try to sleep next to her and get way too friendly. My favorite is when we went camping and he convinced her to sleep on a boat on the lake with him. There were another ten of us in tents, and he decided to sleep on a boat with her. I'm sure he didn't try anything, since she was nine years old back then and he was over thirty. But in any case, it's still f***ed up. Story 9. Still in the same area. So am I. We're still really good friends and hang out a lot. It's been six years since graduation, and I still can't tell if she likes me or not. Don't think she's been in a relationship and she doesn't date, though she may have been gay for a while. She recently got a Bumble account and is matching with guys, so that rules out the gay thing. And now I'm apparently her dating confidant. Hurts. Don't really want to ruin a great friendship over my stupid feelings. Story 10. Had two. First one ended up being a bipolar denier who still refuses to seek help has been married and divorced three times, has changed her name and state she lives in, and lives alone with cats. 
Second one ended up marrying the guy she met after me, but never had any children. Came to find out from her mom years later when I visited her with my family that she never wanted any children and broke up with me because of it. You could say it's strange that I visited my ex-mom with my wife and kids, but she is literally my parents' next-door neighbor. So, yeah, not so weird. Story 11 My high school crush was one of my best friends, and I never told her until senior year because I was in an on-again, off-again relationship all throughout high school. In one of the last off-again segments of my high school career, I told her that I sort of had a crush on her, and she reciprocated the same feelings. She even asked me to prom, which, looking back, is the only time a girl has been proactive in trying to date me. A week before prom, my ex and I got back together, and I had to break the news to my friend that I wouldn't be going to prom with her. Her family had dinner reservations and everything. Really strained our friendship after that especially because my girlfriend didn't let me talk to her. I still feel awful about it, but my ex really had some grotesque hold on me. I ended up moving out of state a year out of high school, and on my last week in town, I ran into her coincidentally, and we talked for like two minutes. But the TLDR of that convo was basically, Hi, bye, looked her up. She's married, is a Christian school teacher, and has seemingly traveled the world. All the things she wanted to do when she grew up. Good for her. Story 12. He spent a lot of time telling me that I was going to be a failure because I didn't pay much attention in school, and he was going to own a cruise line and be a billionaire by now. I just wanted to be an artist, so clearly that wasn't going anywhere. I was completely in love with him, so I didn't realize how much of an asshole he was. I'm the director of a thriving nonprofit, and I'm currently paying my bills writing. I make a small profit on Patreon and have sold about 500 paperback copies this year of the serial I published there. I'm not wealthy, but I'm really happy, and I'm doing what I love, and it's only getting better since I'm applying for graduate school now. He's still a shift manager at Starbucks. We're almost 30. Story 13. Probably studying for exams. I asked her out when I was still in school. I was a grade ahead of her. It made things pretty awkward for a while, but all in all, we are still friends. I haven't seen her in a while, and I don't think she realized just how big of a crush I had on her. Thank goodness, but I would rather have her as a friend than not at all. Just a note to those who have a friend that they want to be more than friends with. Don't be afraid to ask the question. If they're truly a friend worth having, they'll still be your friend afterwards, no matter their answer. Story 14 I didn't have a high school crush. The closest I came was in junior high. This girl handed me a piece of chalk so I could write on the blackboard and looked at me and I realized she was so pretty. I looked at her differently for about a year and thought, wow, she is so hot. But I wasn't that interested or nowhere near being obsessed whatsoever. Eventually, I just lost interest. She wasn't the most absolute popular, hot, or pretty girl. She was actually very petite, but she was just a nice looking girl. So I looked her up and she seems to be a very successful and very smart consultant with a lot of credentials. We're the same age, obviously. I'm actually 43, so she must be too. She looks like she's still 25 and has an amazing body. Story 15. We lost contact a year before I graduated. Turns out we lived nearly perfectly synchronized lives for the next 17 years. She moved back to town to help with her parents after beginning the divorce process because of her unhappy marriage. During that time, I found someone and had a child. Turns out, we had some critical issues with our marriage and began an amicable divorce around the same time. Fast forward a little bit, and she's now lying in bed, curled up in my arms, peacefully asleep. Story 16. Had three main crushes. One graduated college with some random degree and has been babysitting since. It's been about a year and a half, and I have no clue if she's been job searching. One sort of disappeared off the face of the earth. Well, social media mainly. And the last one turned into a ridiculously good cosplayer. Like, one of the more revealing kinds. Story 17. I married her. Worst mistake of my life. I will never regret our daughter, but my ex-wife cheated on me the entire relationship, and I was blind and kept forgiving her. Now I have trust issues, deal with depression daily, my ADHD has been hitting extra hard, but I have custody of my daughter. 
She is currently going through her second divorce, with whom she has two other kids. The only reason I'm fighting is because of my daughter. I recently went to the doctor to help with the depression and soon to start ADHD meds again. Story 18 In high school, one of my best friends, also my crush, wanted to go to UNLV and study hospitality management and work her way up to running a Vegas hotel or casino. She chose a cheaper local college in states, which is fine and made sense. But after her junior year, she got an internship offer to work for a Vegas hotel for the summer and a decent shot at a job there afterwards based on the program history. She passed on this opportunity because being away from her family was too much of a trade-off for her. I never understood that. We stopped being friends. The crush had been long gone. I just couldn't see her the same, and things I thought we had in common no longer existed. She's married and happy, I think, so I guess it worked out. I just can't understand how someone could want something for so long and then just let the chance go. Story 19 I had two big crushes in high school. The first one is happily married after years of dating assholes and just had her first baby. We're still close friends and talk often. The second one is sitting less than 10 feet from me. We put our three kids to bed a bit ago and are now watching the Red Wings Predators game on TV while sipping a rum and coke. Our nine-year anniversary is coming up in a few months. Story 20 Freshman Crush Bouncing from person to person, probably on drugs, barely scraping by. Sophomore crush, turned out to be a huge drama queen, and just not my type. Currently dating a flighty guy who's about to join the Air Force. Meanwhile, she'll be away at university. Junior crush, dated her for a while. Turns out she was pregnant with her ex's kid the whole time. Only lasted about three months. She's now with said ex. I guess not X anymore, raising a kid in her parents' house just a block away from mine. Senior crush, currently about to pick her up from an interview at Lowe's. We've been together for two years now. Yeah, I've dodged a couple of bullets in my short lifetime. Story 21. The guy was a skater boy I was madly in love with. He apparently felt the same but was too scared to make a commitment with me because he didn't want to lose me. I've heard this from several sources and from him. He was average build, not too muscular, long platinum blonde hair, definitely was a punk who was always in trouble, nothing major, just skating reasons, and always wrecking his vehicles. He is now working as an officer in the jail system and is swole as f I didn't know guys could gain that much muscle. I don't think he's found anyone long term, but I haven't checked his profile in over a year. Story 22 I dated my high school crush for two years. She cheated. I broke up with her to pursue someone else. I set her up with one of our best friends, and then we didn't talk for two years. Then I set her up with a friend of a friend of my ex. She's with him now, and they live about two hours away. I pressured her into shortly after my ex and I broke up, but before she and this guy I introduced her to got together. I feel bad about it. It's probably why we don't talk now. I was in a bad place at the time, so I really wanted this girl's affection again, as she's very successful and a bombshell, so it validated me. Made me feel like I was desirable for a little bit. I'd like to apologize and rebuild, but how much of that is seeking validation, I couldn't begin to tell you. Story 23. Getting married to this f***ing asshole of a guy. She's way out of his league and puts up with so much of his but they just bought a house in a nice neighborhood and adopted a new puppy. She's great though. Love of my life. She was actually my first girlfriend. We dated all the way through college, and I didn't appreciate how amazing she really was. But for some reason, she put up with me. And now, next year, I get to call her my wife. 